Hello, friends, and welcome back to another podcast of Women at the Well Ministries, where we believe that all of us have to come to Jesus like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Our highest priority is making God real in your life. Whether you are listening in our app, in your favorite podcasting app, or on our website at watwm.org, we invite you to sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen your daily walk with Jesus Christ. Living a life for Christ, she's a happy girl. Today, as we walk through the scriptures, closely looking at what God has for each of us, I'm reminded that of all of God's creations, He chose to create us in His image. Wonderfully and perfectly made in the image of God, yet we don't serve Him or praise Him like many of His other creations. Every day and every moment, we are made aware of God's presence. Daily, His creations are teaching us meaningful and valuable lessons. Join us in this podcast of Woman at the Well Ministries as Kim takes us on a journey through the scriptures, revealing the importance of our environment. Hello, and thank you for joining us in this podcast of Woman at the Well Ministries. You know, I've often thought in my lifetime how the scripture tells us that even the rocks will cry out and praise him. And I've often thought how I I just didn't want to be outdone by a rock. I didn't want to. Let something that has no soul cannot sing, I have been redeemed, really is kind of dull and just there. Praise the Lord more than I do. And as I begin to think about how, you know, rocks do what they're supposed to do, and my goodness, we call gems rocks, and so they're beautiful and glistening things that are in it. Coal with enough pressure turns into diamonds. We see tremendous things in God's creation. But I don't want God's creation to sing his praises better than I do. And so as I begin to think about that, I'm reminded that the sunshine shouts of his amazing protection over us as we made it safely through the night. We were made in the image of God, yet we just don't scream of his goodness and his greatness like his other lesser creations. The birds sing continuously, reminding us that God has his eye even on the tiniest sparrow, and he provides for their every need, we're told in Matthew 6, 26. The winds, they move at the will and pleasure of God, cooling our face and brushing our hair back, reminding us that though we cannot see him with our natural eyes, that he is there. The waves move back and forth in rhythm, stopping where God has drawn the line in the sand. All of these truths remind us that even the powerful winds and the waves obey his voice. We hear that in Matthew eight twenty seven. But there are other very interesting, amazing things in nature that we know and see that just speaks of the greatness of God. One of those things is the eagle. When a storm comes, the eagle rises above the storm. And when the eagle sees the storm approaching, it sets its wings to the wind. The wind picks it up and lifts it above the storm. What a lesson. We as Christians face many storms. And we need to employ our faith and rise above the storms of life and rest in the presence of God's love and peace. We need to set our faith and sights on God and things above and allow him to pick us up and carry us through our storm. The eagle does it instinctively. We need to set our heart and our mind and purpose to letting God lift us above the things of the world. But perhaps the thing that I find most incredible, or at least right now as I'm thinking, is the lesson we learn from the shark. It's one of the most sought-after aquarium fish for a tank. 
aquarium enthusiasts will do anything they can to get shark in their tank. It is majestic and it's powerful. And so from the standpoint of its beauty and its power, it's easy to see why so many people would want to have a shark in their home aquarium. It's the main attraction when you go to a park that has aquariums or to a national aquarium. But you have to ask yourself, what about their size? They grow upwards of eight feet, some ten. You see hammerheads with long protrusions from their face. How could that be in a home-sized aquarium? How could you ever keep one and it live? The answer lies in how the shark responds to its environment. A shark only grows to the length its environment will support. Now, let's look at that for a minute because this is the same case with Christians. Christians only grow spiritually to the extent their environment fosters and allows them to do so. So if you surround yourself with ungodly people and live with ungodly habits, you're not going to grow to be a strong, vivacious, effective, vibrant Christian. You simply will not reach your potential in Christ. But if you're diligent with whom you surround yourself with and you're careful to follow God's commandments, including his commandment in 2 Timothy 2.15 that says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. If you're diligent to keep those commandments and have those habits and practices in your life and surround you with others that do, you will grow spiritually. You will be large and powerful. You will be the light that God asks you to be in Matthew 5, 14 and 16, which says, let your light so shine before men that you may see, that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. You will be a majestic Christian full of the fruits of the spirit that we're talked about in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The Lord will be evident in your life and your love for him will be demonstrated in all that you say and do. But perhaps the best way to look at the effects that we have from our environment or the impact that our environment has upon us is to take a close look at Mark chapter 2 beginning in verse 2 and concluding in verse 11. And I'm going to read that in your hearing. It's a familiar story for some, and it's an important story for all. Here is how it goes. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four, And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their heart, Why did this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned with themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? I believe many people think of many things for all the wrong reasons instead of just glorifying and edifying what God has to say. Picking up again in verse 9, he says, Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk? But that they ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed, and go thy way into the house. What I want to bring to your attention in Mark chapter 2 is verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith. These are the four men who brought their friend with a palsy to the Lord. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And he was made whole. When we look at Mark chapter 2 and 
verses 2 through 11 in this account, we see that there are four friends who sacrificially love their mutual friend. And this friend of theirs has the palsy. And he's unable to walk to see Jesus to receive the healing that God has for those who believe. But this man with palsy had friends who believed that Jesus would heal him if they could just get their friend to him. In fact, his four friends, their belief was so strong that they would not let anything stop them. No matter what they had to do, they were going to get their friend in front of Jesus because they knew he was his answer. So they took a journey carrying this man, all four of them, carrying their friend to where Jesus was. But when they got there, they found that there wasn't any more room for them. There was no place. They couldn't get in. The crowd was too big. and The crowd that had gathered to hear Jesus had completely filled all the spaces. And for most people, once they got there and they had done all that work to carry their friend, that would have been enough to stop them. But see, this friend, he had friends who loved him. But more importantly, I believe he had friends that knew what the power of Jesus would do if you had it unleashed in your life. This man with the palsy had at least four friends who knew who God was, who understood what Jesus could do in your life if you would open up your heart and allow him in, if you would listen to his commandments and obey them, if you would purpose in your heart to love him above all things. These four friends knew what would happen. And so even though they had carried them the distance, it wasn't going to stop when they couldn't get in because they understood all they had to do was get their friend whom they loved in front of Jesus, and he would no longer be suffering from the effects of having palsy. And so when they realized they couldn't get in, these friends who were not only faithful to their friend with the palsy, they were faithful. They were full of faith in Jesus. And they knew what he could do. So for this reason, they tore a hole in the roof where Jesus was preaching and lowered the man right in front of Jesus right in front of them. Their faith was so strong in the wonder-working power of Jesus that they just had to get their friend to Jesus to receive the healing they knew he would give. By faith, they knew their friend would be made whole through the wonder-working power of Jesus Christ. And they were right. Their faith, according to Mark chapter 2 and verse 5, is why their friend was made whole. Jesus healed their friend completely, and it all began with the faith of their friends. They believed in God enough to carry their friend when he couldn't carry himself. They loved their friend enough to take him to Jesus, where he would receive the help he needed. Are you that kind of friend? Are you laying your friends at the feet of Jesus in prayer? Are you soaking them in the word with your conversations? Is your life a living testimony of the transforming power of Jesus Christ? The man with palsy was taken to Jesus by his friends, and because of that, he received healing because his friends wasn't going to let him miss Jesus. Are you that dedicated? Are you that sold out for Christ? Do you love your friends that much? What kind of friend are you? Do you assist your friends by giving them Jesus and pushing them toward him? Or does your faith lack and being around you kind of pulls them away? Do your friends edify you and lift you up like we're told in Romans 15 too? Are you willing to carry someone to Jesus until they can carry themselves? These four friends in Mark chapter 2 were, and they show each of us the kind of friend that we are supposed to be. We live in a world that tears down. We live in a world that degrades. We live in a world that destroys. We live in a world of destruction. But we have the love of Jesus in us. We have Jesus Christ dwelling in us in the form of the Holy Spirit. We have the light of God in us. We can't be like the world. We have to be different than the world. And we need to love people as Christ loved us. And in doing so, we must give these people Jesus. And we must bring them to Jesus with whatever it takes. 
Just as a shark grows only as big as his surroundings allow him to do so, so also do we. Be careful who you're hanging out with. Go to them and bring them to where you are, but don't go to them and let them keep you where they are. When we surround ourselves with godly people, people who worship and praise God, people who know him intimately and are obedient to God's word, we grow spiritually. You can't help it. It rubs off on you. Are the friends you have the ones that you are talking scripture with? Are you sharing Bible bits? Are you sharing verses? Are you praying with them? Are you a praying friend, not only for them, but with them? Our surroundings impact our spiritual life. They either motivate it and inspire us to be more for God and to reach our potential in Christ, or they hold us back and pull us away and stun our growth. It's important that you surround yourself with godly people who can have the faith to carry you when yours is weak, who can pray you through when you can't find the words who can lay you in front of the throne of God on your behalf, praying for his mercy, his grace, and his blessings on you. You need to seek to have those kind of people. You need to seek to be that kind of friend. You want people around you who care for your soul and pray earnestly for you. It's God's most precious creation. We got to learn to praise him. And nature shows us exactly how it's done. We must learn lessons from his creation to help us live a fruitful and peaceful life in Jesus. We must learn from the shark and carefully maintain godly environments. Proverbs 3, 5, and 7, we are told, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Friends, you've got to trust and believe, listen, learn, and live. you got to pay attention to what's around you. you got to pay attention to what you allow inside of you. And you must purposely demonstrate the light of Jesus that is within you. Surround yourself with friends who have a faithful witness. Enjoy the presence of the Lord in all of your encounters. And let God be the firm foundation all your relationships are built upon. Learn from the shark and grow big because your environment is what it should be. Remember, you are loved. Jesus loves you. Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. You can visit the show notes for quotes from today's podcast and scripture references. We pray today has been a blessing, and we encourage you to reach out to us through our app, our website, or our Facebook page. You can find our app by searching for Woman at the Well Ministries in your app store or through our website at watwm.org. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash watwm. If you visit our website, you'll be able to subscribe to Bible Bits, a daily devotion written by Kim and delivered Monday through Friday by text message. Woman of the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father, and it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. To learn how to partner with Woman at the Well Ministries, please visit our website. Thank you to the gospel group Fudge Creek for letting us use their hit song, Happy Girl. We greatly appreciate your prayers. We are praying daily for our listeners. Remember that God loves you. You are loved. Be good.